problem is, is I fell asleep. I fell asleep. When did you do CPR? This morning. When I found it. Before you called? Yes! It's one o'clock right now. I tried, I was awake, but I actually got out of the bed at like 12.30ish, whatever. So I came downstairs and I was like, oh, he's in the suitcase still. That's Sarah Boone. We've been tracking this case for quite some time. That's the moment with the officer who responds where she's talking about um, her, her boyfriend, George Torres, who was locked in a suitcase all night long. All night long. These two had a, a bit of a toxic relationship as well. Um, and he ended up dying inside of a suitcase. Now, she called 911 originally, saying they were playing hide-and-seek. Uh, it's not clear what was going on. She told a couple different stories. Uh, but then investigators took a look at her cell phone. And on her cell phone is her speaking to and taunting uh, George while she's recording it all. It's bizarre. He's inside a suitcase uh, begging for his life. I'm going to show you uh, that video, and, and it's, it's difficult to look at, but it's the most important evidence in the case because it shows what was happening at the moment he is begging her to just let him out, that he can't breathe. Um, so we're going to take a look at it right now. I, I've given you the warning. If you don't want to hear it, you can turn down the volume. If you don't want to see it, uh, it's about two minutes worth of video. Let's take a look. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. F you. Sarah. F you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. I can't breathe, babe. Seriously. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. 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 Sarah, I can't breathe, babe. That's on you. Sarah, I can't breathe. <laughs> it's on you. Sarah. Reel around some. Might want to get a video for it extra. Because <laughs> I got this. Sarah. Reel around Sarah. some. Sarah, I can't. I can't breathe, babe. Oh. That's what Sarah. I feel like when you chewing on me. Sarah. F you. Please, Sarah. Yeah. You should probably shut the Sarah. up. Sarah. Shh. And once investigators found that video, the whole nature of the case changed. Now, pretrial hearing coming up on January 16th. The trial once again, once again, scheduled for January 26th. Um, take a look at this video. This is the last time that she was in court uh, when she was um, approved to get her seventh attorney, uh, which led to their trial getting postponed for the 13th time. Um, the first 12 postponements took place from July 27th of 2020 to July of 2023. 12 times it's postponed over the course of three years. And you talk about, and it's all happening because she keeps getting new attorneys, new attorneys. These attorneys are finding it impossible to work with her. So let's bring back in our think tank, Ekla Mercy, Kirk Nermi, and Nima Romani. Um, so here we are. Let me ask you about the trial, if, if this thing ever happens. How important is the fact, and these are all the 
postponements and cancellations that we've had. How important is it, Nima, um, when you talk about how he got inside of that suitcase? I can't imagine... I mean, he had to voluntarily get in there, I would think. I don't think he could zip himself in there, but I don't know. How important is that fact, and, and will it play a role in all of this? Well, Vinny, it's an interesting legal argument, but it's not going to carry the day. It's not a civil case, right? So it's a criminal case, and the question is, did Boone have a duty to act? Well, she zipped him up, so once you put someone in danger, that puts the duty on you to save the person from danger. So, you know, I'm sure the appellate lawyers will love it, but this is really an indefensible case. You know, criminal defendants lie all the time, but video doesn't lie. So Sarah Boone is gonna be convicted. And I think the lesson of the show is, you know, poor Jorge Torres to be in a relationship with someone like this, you know, Christian Obenselli, same thing, toxic relationship. And they see Tucker, maybe he turned his life around by ending up with the right person. But I don't see how any attorney can defend this case. I thought Boone would be uh, the next pro se defendant here on court TV, but apparently she found some poor lawyer that's going to take this case and throw up a Hail Mary, and we'll see uh, if there's any chance of her maybe picking off one or two jurors here. And we've also heard, Eklin, <clears throat> through the years now, that uh, one of the potential defenses might be that she's a battered woman, <laughs> that it's going to be uh, the, the, the relationship is very volatile, <laughs> it's very toxic, uh, she's been uh, beaten by him, she's been strangled by him, and, and this is what uh, the result was. Uh, yeah, I, she can't use that. I think um, the video is damning, and any um, all I would have to do is just play that video. And by the third Sarah, in which the victim is calling your name, you lose any defenses. Um, he is constantly calling for help. He is act. He is advocating for his help, and you denied it. So if she, the issue is, I've I've actually um, represented clients like that. The problem is, is that you have a, a you have a defendant who. The only thing that she's waiting for you to say is how to get out of prison. That's it. You have to make it. She is just waiting for her. She is waiting for an answer to get out. So any attorney who cannot tell her how to get out, she is going to fire. So I think that the um, judge at this point needs to make a judgment call on how many more postponements because she's going to do this until the end of time. Um, Kirk Nurmi, you know something about representing uh, difficult clients. Uh, what are your thoughts here? I'm stunned that she's been allowed to go through so many lawyers. I think lawyer number six, we heard in that clip, you're talking about her demeaning response to him. She couldn't keep going with the representation. If that's the standard, everybody could just yell at their public defender and they get a new attorney and they never get convicted. Ultimately, the judge needs to draw the line here. Eklund's right in terms of this case. I think about it. You know, if I was going in there talking to Sarah, I'd say, listen, the, the the evidence is all on this tape. It's all on this two minutes. You're going to get convicted. The jury is going to loathe you. You can go out. You can certainly go up on the stand and say, hey, I was a victim of, of all this domestic abuse. They're not going to believe you because they saw you laughing and taking delight in this man's death. They are going to be tone deaf to whatever you're saying, and you're going to be convicted in an hour or less, and you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison. Each and every attorney she's had has probably told her some version of that story, yeah. and then she starts yelling and acting demeaning. See, Kirk is riled up. He knows how these people are. <laughs>